to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that you are here this morning. Are you all happy? All right. Wave your hand, touch me and me see. All you're happy? Uh, oh, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, so thank the Lord for this blessed time. And uh, if you are visiting us for the first time, we welcome you in the name of the Lord. And uh, this is the house of the living God, so you can feel at home. Hallelujah. So this year, uh, God is... Uh, uh, blessing us, guiding us, and using us for his, for his glory, and uh, continue to seek the face of the living God. Uh, this year is supposed to be the year of flourishing. Hallelujah. So one reminder that uh, we have distributed some envelopes and uh, insert for uh, extravagant offering. That is, we are trusting God to do something beyond our limit, uh, an overflowing abundance, and uh, assign uh, give an assignment to your investment to the kingdom of God. And that envelope need to come back to the church. Uh, you don't need to put anything now. You have one whole year to uh, fulfill that. So I uh, give it to Brother George Samuel. And he will collect it next week. We will pray uh, for the envelopes. And uh, so if you haven't received one, please contact him and uh, participate. And God will honor you for your commitment and for your participation. So two scripture portion we used to uh, read every Sunday uh, for this year, Psalm 92, verse 13, for those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. So as, I, as you know, we are all planted by God, uniquely chosen, uh, in a hand-picked, you say hand-picked. So God has given so much to plant us in the house of the living God. And so we are so thankful that the Lord has done that. Isaiah 58 verse 11 says, the Lord will guide you continually. As a child of God, that's what we are looking for in our life. We need somebody, you know, they can guide us. He can guide us and give us instruction, uh, give us suggestion and uh, promises and expectation for us to go forward. And he said, I and satisfy your soul in drought. So when you go through tough times, God said, I will satisfy you and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fall, fail. So these are the promises the Lord has given us the starting of the year. And we are going to cherish on these verses and, uh, and uh, you know, ponder on to this and uh, try to come out of this, you know, what, what God is intended for us to learn. So last week I started a new uh, sermon series called Journey. You remember journey? So we have journeyed some more, one more week from last week to this week. So we are just journeying uh, to fulfill God's purpose in our life. So <clears throat> there are different uh, kinds of journey. So in our journey, carrying out God's assignment is very important. So remember that. Our journey is to carry out God's assignment. Each and every one of you do have an assignment in life. So carry out God's assignment is important. Our journey must be a purpose driven and guided by God. You know, our journey should be purpose driven. We are not animals. We have a purpose. You know, in our houses, in our house we have many dogs. If the dog is going one direction, if we just call the name, he will come to us. He was not going for any particular purpose. There is no direction for a dog. So you call his name, he will come back. And our journey should be God-driven, purpose-driven, and guided by God. When God is with us and in us in our journey, it makes a great difference and impact. If you carry the presence of God, anywhere you go, it will make an impact. Your handshake, your word, and your talk, your smile, everything should be impacted. Because you are a child of God, you are carrying the anointing. When you give a handshake, some people need to feel about it. You know, I, I told you one story one time when I was back in Bangalore. My friend, my brother brought a friend to my house and uh, he was a chain smoker, I didn't know that. He had a cigarette in his packet. So I am first time meeting this guy. My brother introduces my friend, I gave him a handshake. So later on he said, 
to my brother when your younger brother shook my hand i felt something something you know it was a sh shock and he said after that i don't want to smoke anymore i don't feel like smoking i did not know that that's the testimony i received so you don't need to do anything you carry the presence of god when your journey carrying the power of god is very very important and it should be guided by god and directed by god this morning i just want we don't have a lot of time since i'm continuing this series i can stop it at any time don't worry i will continue this series so in this journey the coming weeks i wanted to add my personal journey also some of the people in this church asked me they want to hear my testimony so it is coming along this journey i'll be including my testimony the failures the victories and everything that i enjoyed in my life just after seeking god hallelujah so it is coming so it will be exciting god is taking us for a journey and there is a purpose in our life and there are different kinds of journey you know god's elect and chosen had different kinds of journey so the first journey i just wanted to bring it to you kinds of different kinds of journey to information sometimes god will take you to somewhere to give information to that person yesterday myself and the uh, dr asher went to a family we went there god took us there to give information about salvation information about god's love information about god's care so first king chapter 17 verse 1 there is god took elijah to the palace lord told him lord elijah i want you to travel to the palace of king ahab i want you to give him some information god directed this journey to give ahab that important information about god's heart and 171 says and elijah the tisbite of the inhabitants of gilead and said to ahab as the lord god of israel lives before whom i stand there shall not be a dew nor rain this year except at my word so this was a journey to share an information to a powerful king god used a little prophet to stand before him and proclaim the word of the word of god hallelujah so god has given him the authority the power the ability and the strength to stand in front of a king so when you are a child of god when you are anointed by the holy spirit there is no need for you to fear anything hallelujah there is no need to shrink yourself according to the situations and you need to stand tall and proclaim the word of god it doesn't matter whom the lord is going to send elijah went into a place of ahab to inform him about the word of god when god is when it is god's assignment you will re receive divine counsel and courage hallelujah when it is god's assignment god is going to divinely guide you divinely guard you and supernaturally protect you you know what happened immediately the lord took elijah's protection god said i'm going to protect you and i want you to be under my care you know the story So this was for information. One time God called Jonah, you know the story of Jonah. God said you need to travel, you need to do get ready for a journey. I wanted to go to Nineveh and inform the word of the Lord. You know what happened? Jonah did not Jonah redirected his path and he ended up in the in the tummy of a, a giant fish. So there is consequences to deroot de God's journey. So God divinely brought him back. And Jonah chapter 1 verse 1 and 2. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah. 
the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. That was his assignment. This was a journey to give information. Sometimes as a child of God, as an elect of God, divinely chosen by God, God will ask you to do certain things in, with your life. God will send you places. And you need to be ready. And you know, God is working through our life to change, transform things. So journey to inform. The second kind of journey is to journey to impart. Sometimes God will ask you to travel and impart into somebody's life. Take the example of Elijah. After the, there was a drought and the, and, the, uh, and the water was not there for him to drink, the Lord said immediately go to Sarephath. That was the journey to impart into that widow's life. God said, I want you to go to her house. Second uh, Kings chapter 17, 8 and 9. When the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Sarephath, which belongs to Sidon. And dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So ultimately, this journey was to impart into her life. You know the story. She was about to die with her only son. They were doing the preparation. While she was preparing to end up her life and her son's life, Elijah appeared there. And even though he asked something for him, but his purpose, God's purpose was to impart poor into her life. And God restored her needs and provided for all that needed for her, for her, her life, to, for her sustenance. So God supernaturally imparted into her life, into her son's life. That was a journey to impart into somebody's life. The third kind of journey is to journey to influence. Sometimes God used you and me to influence others. Remember when Paul, he was sold before, supernaturally touched by God. He fall from his horse and he was, he became blind. He could not do anything. So God chose a person to influence into his life. Ananias. And God said, Ananias, you need to travel. You need to take up a journey for my sake. And you need to go to a street called Straight. It was a journey to influence somebody's life. Children of God, God is looking for you and me to people of influence. When God is sending you somewhere, what with the purpose to influence with Christ into their life? So Ananias, God spoke to Ananias, Acts chapter 9, verse 10 and 11. Now, there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him... The Lord said in a vision, and then I asked, and he said, here I am, Lord. What a beautiful obedience. Sir. So the Lord said to him, arise, get ready for a journey. And go to the street called the straight. When God is instructing you, he is very clear. And you know where things when you receive a prophecy, it is very vague. That is not from the Lord. God is never confused you. And God gave a clear instruction for him to go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. So God told Ananias, Ananias, you need to go to Saul. He cannot see. He is blind. I want you to go and influence him with the love of Jesus. He may not receive you. Ananias was reluctant to go first. He said, Lord, he is a man of a great danger. 
I know what he had done. What he is doing for the people of God. I cannot go. But the Lord has to convince him now. Now he is under my control. Now he is under my control. He cannot do anything that he was doing before. I am controlling his life and his character. He cannot do anything right now. So, this was a journey to influence. Remember, one time Lord told Philip to go to Gaza. Philip was doing ministry. He was doing evangelism. The Lord blocked him. The Lord came. I wanted to stop what you're doing. I want you to go and travel and take a journey to Gaza. And you may see a minister from Ethiopia. He is traveling from Jerusalem to back to his country. I want you to reach to him. He is going in a chariot. But I will empower you. I will give you power. Hallelujah. What a beautiful story. The Lord said he will be traveling in a chariot. But I will empower you to catch him. I will give you power to run through the desert and you will meet him. You will reach him. And Philip said, Lord, I am ready to go. Acts chapter 8 verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying, Arise and go towards the south along the road which goes from Jerusalem to Gaza, this is a desert. Clear instruction. You know the story. You know the result of it. Gospel has been reached to Ethiopia. Children of God, in your journey, God will ask you to do certain things. He will ask you to impart people, impart into people, he will ask you to influence people with the love of Christ. Are you available for God to do what he asks you to do irrespective of your commitment? This man has been introduced to Christ Jesus. He took water baptism and gospel has been carried to Ethiopia. What kind of influence you and me are doing nowadays? Are you influencing people with the gospel? Are you influencing people with love of Christ? We need to change our attitude. We need to be a vessel that God can freely access us. Freely stop our own ideas and ideology. Freely call us to carry his message. We need to have that kind of, that kind of connection. With the presence of God. The fourth kind of journey. The last one I just wanted to speak today. Is journey for change. Sometimes God will ask you to travel. It will be a travel for change. Yesterday morning I spoke here about Jacob. Jacob was traveling from Beersheba to Haran. He was running away from his home. He cheated his father and his brother. He was about to kill him. The mother suggested him, I want you to be alive. You need to run for your life. And during his course, the son was not there anymore. And he took a stone and laid there. But the presence of God came. And he saw a vision about open heaven. A ladder is placed from earth to heaven. And the angels are descending and, and ascending from the ladder. And Jesus, God, was standing on the top of the ladder. So this journey of Jacob was to get a change in his life. God Sovereignly, supernaturally, I mean, told Jacob that I am the God of your father. And I am the God of your grandfather. And I still keep my promise. And those promises I told, it is going to come this place. It is going to be yours. 
he become a changed man. He took a covenant with God. God, he said a few things. You need to keep me safe. You need to provide me something to eat. You need to provide me something to drink. If you can do that, this place, I'm going to worship you. And when you bless me, return me back to my father's house. And I will give to you everything that you blessed with. 10% of every blessing I received will be yours. So Jacob become a man of change. You remember Zacchaeus, one time journeyed, he was running, he was running to climb on a sycamore tree. He had never done in his life. It was for a change. Jesus saw him. Jesus stood for him. He invited Jesus to his life, his, his home. And he changed his life. Sometimes God will take us to places to change our life. I remember into my life, after my undergraduation, I went to Bangalore. It was a journey that the Lord asked me to do. It was a change. It was for a change. I grew up as a Catholic. I was so much devoted into Catholicism. I was supposed to be a Catholic priest. But the Lord took me from that place and placed me in Bangalore along with my studies. I met a guy, a young man. He was a born-again believer. He shared gospel to me. Even though we argued initially, so finally I understood word of God is true. Word of God is life. Committing our life to Christ is one of the greatest things that we can do in our life. At the age of 22, I accepted Jesus as my Savior. The journey I started when I was young, I never realized that it was a change. So God will take us to different places to impact into others, impart into somebody's life, influence somebody. And finally, your journey can be for a change. And we are still traveling. Because God changed my life, I continue my travel. I travel different countries of the world. I preach different countries. So your journey is for a purpose. Your journey is for a destination. And it is life. We are, we are going to continue our journey. I said, let your journey will be guided by the Holy Spirit. Your journey will be directed by the power of God. Your journey will be supernaturally favored by the grace of God. We will continue this journey. I want the worship team. Please be ready. We are going to worship the Lord with one more song. At that time, you need prayer. If you need to accomplish anything in your journey, for the gospel's sake, the Lord is going to hold your hand with his righteous right hand. And he's going to bless you in a very special way. Shall we stand in the presence of God?